In today's video tutorial, we'll be showing you how to make some smooth time remapping in HitFilm Express. Today's video tutorial will be rated 3 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale. And before we begin, make sure to subscribe to my channel Shiny Films if you're new here if you want more video editing and filmmaking tutorials like this one, and follow me on Twitter at Shiny underscore Films. Today I'll be showing you the smooth way to do time remapping in HitFilm Express. But before that, I just want to show you the normal way, so let's just get straight on into it. As you can see here, I've just got my editor, I'm just going to drag this clip in, say, into my normal timeline. As you can see, it goes on for roughly 12 seconds. And if I want to change the time, then what I can do is hit right click and speed slash duration and set a custom percentage, such as 200% and it will play back at twice the speed. And the clip has shortened to be half the length at only five, six seconds. But that's not very smooth time remapping. And if you wanted to change the time remapping in between certain parts of the clip, then you'd have to slice it like so, and then change the bits individually, which would not be too smooth. You can also use the rate stretch tool down here and drag your clip like so. And instead of trimming the clip, this will actually stretch and squeeze the clip, making it play back faster. So for example, if we squeeze it like that, it plays back at 250%, but I'm just gonna go back to 100 because that's not the kind of smooth time remapping that we're really looking at. You can use that for a lot of different purposes, but today we're just going to be taking a look at some smoother time remapping. And the way we're going to be doing that is using the speed effect. The speed effect is really handy for a really big variety of situations, but it doesn't work very well uh, in comparison to the rate stretch tool for most things. Let me show you what I mean. Go into the effects panel and just search up for the speed effect and drag it onto your video. Now, if I select the speed to be two, it'll play back at 200%, or it'll play back at twice the speed, which uh, works fine if we just play it back, but you'll notice that in the second half of the clip, it just goes transparent. And that's something that's pretty unavoidable because in this clip, it's just put the whole clip into the first half uh, and squeeze it into the first half, but it can't really do anything about the second half. And even if we try to trim it, then what will happen is it'll just do the same thing again and it'll put this clip now into the first half of this clip as you can see here. So that's not what we want to do at all. So as you can see it works a little bit tricky in that way and again if we do something like 0.5 so now it'll play back at half the speed then we only manage to get the first half of the clip because only the first half is being played back at this half speed and the rest is getting cut off by the natural boundaries of this clip. And so the speed effect has its limitations. So the speed effect might seem like a bad idea, but the speed effect is super useful if you use it right, because it's got this key frameable value that we can animate and change over time. Here I've got this uh, comp right open of just some music that I've got. Um, so I'm just going to uh, play this back for you. All right, some pretty sick beats. Um, we're going to be using some of these beats to time remap our clips to these certain sections in our video. So I'm just going to play the video back and pause it at that first beat. That's our first beat right there. And what we can even do is if we hit right click, options and show waveform, then in our composite shot here, we can look at the waveform in our timeline like so. I'll just uh, go to that frame right there. And I'll just drag my first clip in. Just like so. And now we can add our speed effect. So just drag it on. And I'm going to start keyframing the speed effect. If you don't know how to keyframe, then I'll go through it quickly with you. If we open up the speed effect and hit the little circle next to the speed value, by the way, in the 2017 version of HitFilm Express, you can only do this in the composite shot. Uh, but if you hit the uh, little circle next to the speed value right there, then it'll create a keyframe for us in the middle here and it'll activate keyframing. If I just hide the clip so we don't get any lag, and I'll just go to the next beat. That's the next beat. And if I just uh, go ahead and change the speed value, it'll create another keyframe for us, like so. And now we've got two keyframes, and between the two keyframes, you can see the value moves slowly from one to the other. 
And in the middle here, I'm just going to set a value of say one or something as well. And at the beginning, I'll set a value of 20. Now let's just uh, show the clip again. And because uh, HeatFilm is not very good at rendering and it'll play back pretty laggy if we just play back uh, with the speed effect on like that. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to um, RAM preview this. The way we're going to do that is just go a little bit beforehand and hit the play button with the little circle around it, preview. And uh, it'll preview that for us and uh, slowly render out each frame, saving in our RAM. And then when it's done, we can just hit stop and the blue bit here will be able to play back all normal. So I'll be with you in a bit. All right, so it's rendered past that. Let's just go ahead and play it back and see what it looks like. As you can see, we have an animation of our speed right there. And uh, it looks all right. As you can see, it starts off pretty fast, then slows down in the middle and speeds back up again. And that's kind of what we want. But what we can do is even further adjust what these keyframes are going to look like. So if we just open up the value graph here, like so, then we've got our keyframes shown up in a value graph. On the x-axis, you have time, like normal. And on the y-axis here, you have the actual value. In this case, the speed. And you can see it goes straight from 20 to 1 to 20. And if we just highlight these all, and just select this little circle here at the end, it'll convert those selected keyframes to manual Bezier interpolation. And now we don't have to guess the values between uh, these two keyframes. Instead, we can manually change it. So I'm just going to zoom into the timeline a little bit, like so. And you can see these handles, these arms, whatever you want to call them. You can drag them around and change what the interpolation is between the keyframes. I'm just going to change it to be like this, so that we have uh, our video going more slowly, like so. I'm just going to drag this keyframe a little bit earlier. There we go. And now, if we want to see our changes again, we're just going to have to RAM preview it again and uh, make changes, RAM preview, and so the cycle continues. Our RAM preview is done. Let's take a look. Okay, so it doesn't quite cut off at the end of the music there, but that's fine. I'm just going to keep overlaying some clips on. Uh, and this way, instead of shortening the clips, I'll just overlay the next clip on top on a different layer. And that way it'll kind of cl cut the clip below uh, without actually changing it. So I'm just going to continue the process for a couple of other clips and then I'll be right back. Anywho guys, that's the final effect. I hope you found something in this tutorial useful. Bear in mind, this speed effect can be used for a lot of different purposes. You can even use this, uh, you know, this velocity, this time remapping in you know, whatever your cinematic vlogs or your gaming montages or whatever it might be. This is super helpful in a whole number of situations. But beware, it is finicky, so again, there are the downsides and the good things to using it. You can always go back to the ordinary rate stretch tool and that speed slash duration if you're feeling that the uh, speed effect is not working for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to give it a like so that other people can find it and gain use from it as well. If you did find it useful and you want other stuff like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films, if you want more video editing and filmmaking tutorials like this one. And of course, follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films. I'll see you all in the next video. Stay shiny.